It's time for another objectivity video. Ancient documents, check. Mysterious unopened boxes, check. Keith Moore, head librarian, check. We have everything we need for an objectivity video. What have we got, Keith? What okay. have we got? Okay. Well, we have here three very large lenses, and these are lenses from aerial telescopes made in the 1680s. So you can see they are inscribed, and the lenses themselves are rather nicely mounted. And these were made by Christian and Constantine Huygens, the great Dutch instrument makers and astronomers. And what you have here is a lens of glass, and it's mounted. For July or for June, or what month is that? Yeah, it's for January, I think. For January. First things first, Keith, this is not the original mount. It isn't, no. This is a later uh, Victorian mount, and it was put on there by a Victorian astronomer called Warren de la Rue. Okay, and we see this mount comes from 1856, mm -hmm. so a couple of hundred years. Yeah, and nearly. the lens has probably been remounted several times in its lifetime. Another thing I'm noticing, Keith, is that the glass is like it's got lots of flecks and bubbles in it and it's not very like it's not the sort of perfect glass I associate with astronomy. Well that's absolutely right and something else you might notice about it it's rather flat it's, it's, it doesn't really look too much like a lens it doesn't have much of a, 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 a profile to it. Yeah you're right it hasn't got that kind of concave or convex nature you would associate with something for bending light. Uh, and this is just limitations of the glass making techniques of the time uh, but also um, it's to do with how they observed at this period. So this is part of a very particular kind of an instrument called an aerial telescope. An aerial telescope? Mm, yeah, so we're very familiar with telescopes which have tubes. This one didn't. And you can see here this is a 120 two foot focus, you'd be standing 122 feet behind this with another lens and you would be made trying to make an observation with a telescope of that length. That's extraordinary. So this piece of glass is 122 feet above us, yep. refracting the light down to, to someone observing it way down below. That's absolutely right. Well let's put down our 122 footer. And let's have a look at the next one. Fairly similar looking. Again it says object glass, 170 feet, a much bigger focal length, but I also can't help noticing it says here presented by Sir Isaac Newton. So this belonged to Newton, he presented it to the Royal Society. Oh wow, but he got it from Huygens. He did, yes. So these weren't donated by Huygens as like museum pieces to say remember me by this, it was more along the lines of get to work, there's more work to be done with this. That, that's right, so he made them in the 1680s, but this one was presented in 1691, this one slightly later, and the third one later again. So they had a, quite a long life as instruments. Just think about this, people. Huygens, Newton, all used this, and now we're seeing it here. Now you're looking through it right now. Amazing. So we've got one more to open, last but not least. Okay, here we have it again. It says object glass by Huygens for a telescope of 210 feet. Pretty big. That's amazing. Mm. Just so I can say I held all of them. We'll hold this up to the window in a second so people can see all these little, mm. these little bubbles. Wow, real piece of history that. We do have some drawings here. Here we have papers on large telescopes by Robert Hooke. So he says uh, that was set up about the middle of the quadrangle of Gresham College, a mast or a pole of about 14 inches in diameter. And we can see a picture of it because he very helpfully drew one. Oh, wow. So wow. here it is. Oh, you can even sort of see the quadrangle too. That's right. So this is Gresham College. This is the Royal Society's first home. And you can see there's a mast embedded in the ground here. Now you will see that this is an enclosed telescope. So oh. it's not, not quite an aerial telescope yet. Uh, and these would be typically 20 foot or more yeah. in length. Uh, and reasonably stable, but, but they would tend to bow these instruments. So not ideal. And right at the back here we have a classic image 
of exactly how these things work. So wow. here we've got the mast again and it's a pulley system so you can raise and lower the object glass which is in this bucket arrangement at the far end of the telescope. And you can see that the observer is using a lens here which is just tied by a piece of string to the business end. That's amazing to see. Two leaves? Two leaves? Two leaves of... Two leaves? Of green tea. Of... What does that say? I don't know. Two leaves of bow here mm -hmm. and one of green tea from oh. Gordon's Garden. Gordon's mm. Garden. All right, here we go. Being careful not to drop anything, Brady. Oh, okay. Tea leaves from Gordon's Garden. <laughs> so the, the larger one of those would be green tea. Wow. I mean, I've got to be honest, when I suggested doing tea, I didn't expect you to actually find 